Father, we thank you, Lord God, for today. We thank you that we can come in your presence. We thank you that we have the privilege to worship you. And I pray that today your word would speak deep into our hearts, that we would know you more and become more like you. And I thank you, Father, for all that you would do today. In Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. Well, today we're... I'm continuing a series I started a little while ago called Just Believe. And the idea came from, uh, as I was reading through the book of Mark, and uh, there's an account there of a leader called Jairus who went to try and find Jesus uh, because his daughter was ill and he he wanted to try and and ask Jesus to, to come and pray for his daughter. And he was doing that, and as he's having a conversation, you know, the other story of a lady who, who was bleeding, uh, you know, for years and went and touched the hem of Jesus. And then uh, in the meantime, you know, Jairus' mates came up and said, hey, hey, bro, don't bother the te-. He didn't really say bro, that's my sort of transition. Of, you, know, you know, don't bother the teacher anymore, you know, like don't bother Jesus because... Your daughter has died. And as they were thinking about this and all that stuff, Jesus turns to them. And and in verse 36 of chapter 5, it says, um, he says, Overhearing what they said, Jesus told them, don't be afraid, just believe. And when I read that verse, it jumped out at me. I'm like, wow, that's a key to life. Like if we could apply that, just that one sentence into our lives, like, our lives would change if we didn't worry, if we didn't fear, if we just believed. How many of us need an extra dosage of uh, no fear and more believing this morning? I do. And so today, I want us to continue this, and we're going to find ourselves in the book of Daniel. And so in the book of Daniel, in chapter 1 to chapter 3, some really interesting things happen. There's uh, basically... Uh, the Babylonians were, were ruling, uh, just to give you a bit of background information. King Nebuchadnezzar was the, uh, was the guy in, in, in charge, and, and they were brutal. They dominated and they captured the D- Jewish nation, basically brought an end to the, uh, to the, to the, to the kingdom, uh, that the, you know, the divided kingdom that was running at the time. And so uh, there was a couple of uh, Jewish guys that were captured and brought in as slaves. And, uh, and what had happened was King Nebuchadnezzar then, uh, you know, had a dream. And he called all of the astrologers and all the wise people around him and said, you know, I've got this dream. You tell me what the dream is and then interpret the dream. And they're like, we can't do that. It's impossible. No, no man alive could do that. And he got so angry and upset he, he went about and started executing all these wise men. And, you know, and when Daniel heard about this, he was like, oh, no. So he went and approached the king and said, look, give me some time. Let me sort it out and I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you because God knows your dream and he'll tell me. And, I'll, you know, and so he has this sort of dialogue. Anyway, and all that kind of happens. And, uh, and so uh, then... Um, You know, Daniel interprets the dream and all that sort of stuff. But uh, also what had happened was um, there was a situation in uh, in Daniel chapter 3 where uh, King Nebuchadnezzar also made a decree that uh, you know, when, when worship, well not worship, when music played, when there were certain instruments played and all this sort of stuff, everyone had to stop and worship the big statue that he erected. And, uh, and so that's what kind of happened. And we pick the story up from there because if we turn to Daniel chapter 3, verse 14 to 18, and I encourage you at home to read the first three chapters of Daniel at least to get the full context of what happened. But in, in verse 14, it says, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? So what had happened was uh, the... Uh, the, the, the decree went out, the, the, the music went on, and all the people bowed down and started worshipping the statue. But these three guys, uh, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as some of the outback Aussies say, your shack, my shack, and a bungalow. Ever heard that? No? Oh, anyway. Well, we're not that far out back, are we? You know? Anyway, so what happened is these guys... Um, you know, were reported to King Nebuchadnezzar that they did not bow down to the, to the idol. 
And so he's called them in and he says, you know, is it true, Shadrach, your shack, my shack, and a bungalow, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? Wow, that's pretty full on. Especially when you know the brutality of the Babylonians at that time. This guy wasn't mucking around. He wasn't joking. He was serious. And, and let's read the next part and see what happens. I want us to see the response of, uh, of, of these guys. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace... The God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. A couple of things I just want to point there before we read verse 18. You know, they did not agree with the bowing down to the idol. It was against their belief system. But notice, whilst they did not conform to the the expectation that was put upon them, which, which contradicted their faith, Notice the respect they spoke to the king with. They honoured the king. So they were still honouring, although they did not want to conform. Does that make sense? And it's a very important point because just because we don't agree with somebody doesn't mean we disrespect them. Yeah? We could still be respectful and honouring, although we may not agree with what's happening. And then, check this out. But, in verse 18... Even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. I love that response. Do you know what I love about that response? Two simple words. Even if. Today's message is just believe even if. Because how many times do we find ourselves in a situation, we know God will deliver us. We know that God will be the God who'll protect us and look after us and provide for us and do all these great things for us. But even if he doesn't, I will still worship him. It reminded me of a story from when I was a young lad, just last week, no, well, you know, many years ago when I met this beautiful woman who swept me off my feet. That's a terrible joke. <laughs> you don't want to know what he said. Anyway, and then what happened was, um, you know, I, I, I remember, you know, I'd, I'd sort of been saved for a, a little while and, and – um, But I had it committed in my heart that I was going to be like the Apostle Paul. I was just going to serve God and do everything for God and and just focus everything on him. I was going to be married to God. That was it. And then I met this beautiful, charming woman who not only changed my mind, but swept away my heart. And so all of a sudden I I came to 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 the thought, I thought, you know what? Uh, and, and God actually spoke to me. We were in a meeting in a connect group. So for those of you that are single and uh, want a husband or wife, join a connect group. Little plug for connect group leaders. You can't join one until you're 25. <laughs> and, and God spoke to me and, and, and you know, said, you know, that's going to be your future wife. I was like, whoa, you know. So all of a sudden... I, I let down on my guard and, you know, uh, started to get to know Rebecca more and we became really good friends and I was overseeing the, the church service that we were in, like all the departments, and Rebecca was running the kids' church. So we talked a lot on the phone and, uh, and all was good. We became really close friends until we got sort of really close and Rebecca, um, you know, had a chat with me and basically said, look, I'm not ready for a relationship, uh, you know. And I was like crushed. 
crushed. You know, I, I know I wasn't being thrown in the fire like these three guys, but I was crushed. Why? Because, you know, two reasons. Number one, I finally, like, uh, you know, uh, realized how much I love her and how much I want to spend the rest of my life with her. And now she doesn't want to spend the rest of her life with me. I just thought I'd mention that to the, you guys at church so you can, you know. She's changed her mind since, <laughs> as you can tell. But the second reason I was crushed and devastated was because I thought I heard God. And so now I've not only got this issue of dealing with, you know, falling in love with someone who doesn't want to, you know, have a relationship. Now I've got this other issue I'm carrying of, do I really hear God? So, so you know, I've quit my job. I've, I've you know, decided to go to Bible college. I've, I've, you know, given up everything because I believe that God's speaking to me and I'm doing this. And now... I'm questioning, do I hear from God? This was an even if moment. Even if God does not deliver the promise he spoke to me. Even if he said, Rebecca will be your wife and Rebecca rejected me. Even if I will still worship our God. And how many times do we find ourselves in situations where, where we believe, oh, you know, I've become a believer and now all this stuff happens and this is good and that's great and God's blessed me and hang on a minute, this is terrible. Hang on a minute, I've experienced this, but hang on, I'm now in a financial crisis. Hang on, I've now got this relationship breakup. No, hang on, now I've got all this. Even if I will worship God. So today I want to encourage you, if you've had some challenging moments, maybe, you know, you've been at the brink of being thrown in the fire, let me remind you that the fire is a place of refinement. Gold is made in fire. Fire is a place where you can come out on the other end feeling pumped. I remember being in another even-if situation when I was in Indonesia and uh, there was a woman who had cancer and only had a few weeks left to live. And uh, I went and in, was introduced to her through a mutual friend who came to our church and prayed for this woman. And long story short, she got healed. I'll give you the full story in free indeed if you register online. She got healed. You can imagine how excited you'd be to know that you've prayed for someone who's been healed. I need to find, a couple of weeks later, I get a phone call from my dad to say, I've got pancreatic cancer and the doctors told me I've got two months to live. So we found the next available flight in Indonesia, flew back to Australia and went, and I'm like, I'm pumped. I'm like, the miracle working power of Jesus is flowing through me. I just prayed for someone who had cancer and they got healed. So I prayed for my dad. Two months to the day almost, he passed away. It was a but if moment, or even if, I should say. You know, why didn't he heal my dad? I don't know. But I'm here to testify that I don't need to defend my God. Even if he doesn't deliver, even if he doesn't work through me to bring healing, even if I experience these challenging situations, even if it looks like the world around me is falling apart, I will worship God. Just believe, even if. In this story, if you continue reading, you'll see that whilst they were in the fire, Nebuchadnezzar, they're having this discussion, but there was three that went in there. Why is there now four? And the fourth person looks like the Son of God. You see, it is in the fire that we are able to allow Jesus to be seen in our life. So you may be going through the fire. You may be going through some challenges. I encourage you this morning, even if, worship God. So today I want to talk about A simple thing. How do we have a just believe even if attitude? 
Who wants to have a just believe even if attitude? Who wants to be the resilient type of believer that no matter what happens to, to them, no matter what comes their way, even if we will declare our Lordship is Jesus? Who wants that sort of an attitude? So today, I'm going to help us by giving us an acronym. The acronym is going to be very simple for you to understand. The acronym is PCC. How cool is that? You can't forget that, right? It takes a lot of creativity to think of these things, you know? Why PCC? And I don't mean our church. That's just to trigger a memory to remember the sermon, right? Because P stands for prayer. If we want to be a type of people who would just believe, even if we need to be a people of prayer. You see, if we have a look at Daniel chapter 2, if you go back a verse, when Daniel approached the king and, and spoke to King Nebuchadnezzar and said, you know, hey, give me time so that I could help tell you the dream and interpret it for you. This is what happened. It says, Then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends, Hananiah, Mishalel, and Azariah, which was, uh, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was the Babylonian names given to them. But I wasn't speaking in tongues. I was just reading the names, right? So he went back to them and spoke to them and, and explained to them the situation. And then he urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. So what happened here is Daniel in a situation where now his life's on the line. He didn't just have his future wife dump him before they even started dating. He simply had a situation where, where he was going to be executed because of this crazy thing that the king has asked for. But his solution, prayer. He went to his mates and said, come on, let's come before God. Let's plead to God that he would speak to us, that he would give us this mystery so then our lives would be saved. So if we want to be a just believe, even if kind of Christian, we need to be a people who can pray. A people who not just pray, but a people whose default position is prayer. That I will pray. You see, when Rebecca gave me the devastating news, it's okay, we know what happened in the end. But at that time... It was pretty tough. You know what I did? I remember being at home and I prayed. And I started praying for Rebecca. Not praying to manipulate God's hand. Not praying that, God, you made a mistake or, God, she doesn't hear from you. Speak to her. None of that stuff. That would be manipulation. That wouldn't be a even if kind of Christian. That would be just believe and tell God what to do. But I started praying that God bless Rebecca. Bring for her the best husband possible for her. And, and Lord, and I just kept praying blessing over her. I didn't know I was praying for myself at the time. I had no complaints. But this is what happened. And then as I was praying for Rebecca, you know, God spoke to me and brought me comfort. In that moment, he, you know, I, I felt like, well, if Rebecca, who is the most, sorry ladies, the most amazing woman on the face of this earth. And, 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 and if, if she's not the one to be my wife, then that means God must have someone even better. Wow, how's that possible? But it brought me comfort. And as I started to pray for Rebecca, um, you know, he, he, he showed me um, an image uh, of, of something, and I won't go into the details. And so I thought, wow. So I, the image was so strong. I'd never painted on canvas or anything like that before. I went and bought some paint and canvas and stuff, and I painted this picture. And the next time I saw Rebecca, I gave it to her. 
and said, here, this is what I felt as I was praying for you. And it was, I was just thinking more so that there was an awkwardness between us. You know what I mean? I mean, I might be seeing all these departments at church. She's the kids pastor. And somehow, you know, we've got to communicate. And we don't want this awkwardness. You know what I mean? So I thought, I'll give her this gift, a painting that I painted. And it would just, you know, show her that no hard feelings, all's cool. Well, little did I know. This image that God showed me that I painted, that I gave to Rebecca, that she, uh, you know, had every time she saw that, that God started to speak to her. (laughs) And I didn't know. And long story short, within two weeks, so single people learn how to paint. (laughs) She ended up, um, you know, like God speaking. Anyway, long story short, you know the end. We're married. Praise God. God is good. But the point is that in that moment... It was an even if moment. Was I still going to serve God? Was I still going? I mean, I'd just given up my career and and everything and went into Bible college and I was a full-time student. And was I going to be like, well, he didn't deliver the promises. Well, you didn't deliver your end. I'm not going to deliver my end. Forget about it, God. It's over. Was I going to be a quitter? Was I going to give up? No. Even if. I know God will deliver me and I know God has the best for me and I know that God will provide the best things for me. But even if he doesn't, my God is still my God and I will trust him regardless in all things. Amen? So prayer is a key. Do you know when we pray, do you know what we're saying? God, I trust you. God, you are in control. If we don't pray, we just try to do it in our own strength. It's like saying, well, God, I don't need you. I've got this. But when we pray, we're humbling ourselves to say, God, I need you. Deliver me. Spring situation. You know, I don't know what to do with my child anymore. It's just an illustration, Jay. Don't get upset. It's just an illustration. I don't know what to do anymore. You know, God, speak to me. And it's like I'm saying, God, you are in control here. You have the ability to, to, to cut through situations. When we pray, it's putting God first. That was P. Well, we're PCC. So what's the first C? I'm glad you asked. The C is connect with God. How cool is that? In Daniel 6 verse 10, you know, um, uh, there was a decree that was published that, you know, uh, you know, you had to worship him and all that sort of stuff. But in Daniel um, 6, verse 10, it shows us Daniel's life that he portrayed, how he lived. And it says, Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. You see, this gives us an insight into David's life. We know from chapter 3 that he ended up, God spoke to him and he interpreted the dream of Nebuchadnezzar and, and told him what it was and, and, and all was good. But here it gives us insight to Dave, uh, Daniel, I was going to say David, but I'm sure David was the same. Daniel's lifestyle here was three times a day he got on his knees and prayed. That's pretty full on. I mean, who wants to hear God's voice like Daniel did? Who wants to be a sort of person? Imagine this. You go to work tomorrow. Well, if COVID, COVID permits, right? You go to work and you're sitting at the desk and someone walks past you and say, Hey, Bob, let's just say his name's Bob. Bob. Guess what? God has just spoken to me about a dream you had last night. And this is what happened. And and this is what it means. Can you imagine what that would do for Bob? Bob would be down on his knees saying, there is a God. This is real. Wow. How did you know all this? True. We don't need to go to evangelism classes. We just need to hear a word from God. But how did Daniel get to the point where he could hear God's voice clearly? And accurately to even know what the description is of the dream that someone had. Simple. He prayed three times a day. So I'll ask the question again. Do you want to hear God's voice like Daniel did? We need to connect with God like Daniel did. 
I mean, sometimes, you know, we get up, we have a, you know, five-minute prayer in the morning and a quick coffee and da-da-da. And we thought, oh, I'm done. I've ticked the box. I've prayed. I don't think that's how Daniel was. Well, we didn't have coffee for starters. But anyway, that's the, the thing. So it's important that we connect with God. I'm going to move on because running out of time. But one thing that also spoke to me in this situation is when Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego came before the king and they were in a life-threatening situation, notice that their response was not just resistance to what the king was wanting him to do, but they also brought about a confession of their faith. The point I'm trying to make is sometimes we don't agree with people and we fight the argument, and, oh, because I, no, I don't agree with that and I shouldn't do this and I shouldn't have to do that. But that's not their argument. Really, it's about coming and saying, you know what, I'm a believer and this is what I believe and this is why I believe and bringing it back to who God is. But anyway, that's just a side note, nothing to do with the sea that was just... The second C that we're going to look at, or so from PCC, is community. Notice Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Every time they're mentioned in the Bible, they're always together. They're not lone rangers. Notice Daniel has now got this massive problem and he's you know, faced with this challenge and he's got an even if situation in his life. What did he do? He went back. And prayed with his mates. You see, community is something that we need. It is community that helps us stay together. Because there are times, I know, even in our relationship as a husband and wife, there are times where I might be like challenged or struggling or questioning faith or, you know, this probably happened a lot more in the early years than it does now, so don't stress. You think, what's my pastor doing? Questioning, you know. But just as an illustration, there are times when I need encouragement and Rebecca would come along and encourage me. And then there are times when Rebecca might be feeling discouraged and I've got to come along and encourage her. Why? Because we're better together. And so it is important for us to understand that, you know, we were meant to be in community. When God created Adam, as good as he might have been, as a perfect creation, I mean, we know today with science and all that stuff how amazing, you know, the human autonomy is. I'm trying to sound real sophisticated because Dr. Deb is in the room. <laughs> but, you know, like, you know, how sophisticated the human body is and all that stuff. So he was created perfect. And God said, it is not good for you to be alone. And so he created Eve. Why? Because we weren't meant to be in isolation. I know that sounds silly hearing me say that when we've just come out of lockdown. But do you know what I'm trying to say? We weren't meant to be alone. We were meant to be together. And, and together we become powerful. And I'll finish with this story, which I probably shared a few years back. But when I was about 20 or so, it wasn't that long ago in case you're wondering, I decided to join a gym. What are you laughing for? <laughs> Can't tell? Shush. I joined a gym because I thought, you know, I could build myself up, be strong, all's cool. So I got a membership and I went to the gym all excited and pumped, ready to push some steel. Don't even know the terminology they use. but In the DJ circle, we say the wheels of steel. So that's what sort of jumped in my mind. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm more of a DJ than a bodybuilder. The point is that I went to the gym and I started working out and it was like good. And after a couple of weeks, I'm like, you know me, I like to talk to people. You noticed? And I'm, you know, at the gym and, and I'm looking around, you know, I'm thinking, no one here wants to talk to you. Everyone's like looking in the mirror, talking to themselves, not conversing, not caring about anyone else around, just, and, and, and I'm like, and they just, you know, you know, and everyone's just in their own little world. No one's talking to you, you know. It's all like, so it was like I was going to the gym on my own and, and not having anyone to talk to. And I, I reckon I lasted about two months. The point is, I reckon 
If I join that gym with someone else, like say Jason, I know he looks like he works out, and we went to the gym and we were working out together and we'd have a bit of a chat about whatever, probably nothing important, we'll just talk about whatever. When the time came that I'm like, oh, I don't feel like going today, I'd be like, oh, I don't want to let Jason down. I better go with him, you know. Or if I'm telling Jason, oh, look, I don't know if I'm cut out for this. He'd be like, come on, man, you can do this. Come on, Bush, come on, give me another 10. No, he wouldn't do that, but you know what I mean. Like we would encourage each other and we would probably end up going to the gym for a lot longer, at least I would, because I'd have someone to encourage me and talk to me, yeah? Well, it's an image of how we are in our spiritual walk. We can do it on our own. We can try and, 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 you know, just stay at home and read the Bible and spend time with God and all that stuff, and, and that's all good. There's nothing wrong with that. But when we're together, we're able to encourage each other, spur one another on. We're able to pray for each other. You know, when Daniel had his situation and his problem, he came back to his community and they prayed together. And this is why as a church, if I might throw a plug in there for connect groups, why connect groups are so important. Because it gives you a community of people that you can connect with so that when you have an even-if moment, and you're starting to wonder, oh, I'm not sure if I can do this. Others around you can encourage you. Maybe you might be a strong person and not having any what-if moments, but maybe someone else in a connect group might be struggling with their walk. And we're able to help them and encourage them. And so I encourage you, join a connect group if you're not in one. I encourage you to even join the church WhatsApp group if you're not in that because that will help keep you connected with what's happening and help you not feel isolated, especially during this time of isolation. So I want to end with this. Today, maybe you're, maybe you're here and you've come to church and thinking, man, oh, I've just scraped through, man, I've got so much going on, I've got these challenges, these issues, I've got this sickness, I've got all this stuff happening. Um, I, I encourage you to think of even if I will worship God. I'm going to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would Minister deep to us, Lord God. Father, I pray for those of us that are carrying burdens of relationships, finances, issues, challenges, whatever it may be in our lives, Lord God. Father, those burdens that we have, I pray that we learn to give them to you like you asked us to. And I pray, Father, that you would strengthen us so that even if you don't deliver, we will continue to worship you. We will continue to have you as our Lord and our Saviour. And I pray that this morning we be encouraged to press on to the things that you have for us. That we will continue to serve you and serve you even more. And like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, that we would be your people who have faith to even be thrown in the fire because we will continue to stand for you. So I thank you for blessing every one of us here today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.